It's somewhere in between. Uh, from one to two, that's a big range, okay? So I want to make this, I want to narrow this down, right? So here's where the, the name of this comes in. If I take this interval, this interval here, and I know the root has to be somewhere in here, and if I have it, if I bisect it, right? Uh, what value is that? It's an easy value. It's 1.5 or one and a half. Three on two, right? If I now test again, right, and in fact, I'm literally, I'm going to write this test again. If I test again and see what this function is doing at one, one and a half, I'm going to get something that is either negative or positive, right? Now, I've already done this one. So this looks to me like, well, three on two squared is nine on four, and then you take away three, which I think is negative three quarters, I think. Now, the value of it is not so important to me. What really matters is the sign, right? So you can see here, all right, if there's, there's like negative one, so negative three quarters, not quite that far away. So I'm gonna put about there. Okay. Now you can see, I'm starting to pin in, I'm trying to hem in where the root is. Now I can ignore this part here. The root's not here, it's negative to negative, right? The root has to be somewhere where the change in sign occurs, okay? So I've, I've narrowed in my search, I'm going to narrow again. I'm going to halve it another time. Okay. So I'm going to say, okay, well, what's halfway between one and a half and two? 1.75. 1 1.75, 1, 1, 1 and 3 quarters after it. So now that I've halved the interval, I want to find out what the function is doing there. So I'm going to say f of 1 and 3 quarters. Someone want to give me a value? Give it to me as a decimal or whatever. Remember, again, I'm not that interested in value. What I'm really interested in is the sign. What do you get? <coughs> Zero point? Someone? Anyone? One over 16. Is that what it is? One over 16? Okay, I'll just do that. That's fine. We can stay in fraction layer. We're not going to last very long, but that's okay. One over 16. Okay, so where is that? One and three quarters. Well, it's above, isn't it? I've got a positive. It's not very far away either. Uh, one on sixteen. That's one. So that's a half. That's quarter and eight. I'm about there. Okay. So you can see now. Again, I've narrowed in further. Right. I've halved the interval from once. Now I've done it twice. Okay. So now I'm in here. I could stop if I wanted to. All I'm going to do is I'm going to keep on doing it until I'm as accurate as I want to be. Right. Remember when I said engineers is like, well, we need a certain level of accuracy. At some point, it gets ridiculous. The hundredth decimal place, no one can tell, right? So here, I'm still between 1.5 and 1.75, but still a fair bit of range, okay? So now, just to um, speed things up a little bit, I've already gone through this process, so rather than make you mechanically go through it, I'll show you the results that I got. So the next halving of the interval between here and here, I'm pretty sure is one and five eighths. And the value I got for that was, so I'm going to take this, right? I'm going to come over to my graph, and I'm going to say, right, well, I halved the interval, so I'm here, right? And the value I got was just negative. Okay, so it's about there, okay? So this is one and five, eight, okay? So I just need to get closer and closer and closer. The next one is going to be one and 11 sixteenths, okay? And the decimal I got for that was negative so, okay, now, like I said, I can just keep on going however far I want. My graph is starting to get a bit difficult now. So I'm arbitrarily going to stop at the moment. The question will generally say, give it to me um, this many times, or give me a desired accuracy level. Give it to me, for example, to the nearest one decimal place or two decimal places. If you get your calculator out now, and I can see, I must be in, I'm, I'm gonna get this color out. I must be in here, right? Can you see that? Uh, what is one and 11 sixteenths? What is that actual decimal value? One point six eight. Is it six nine or six eight? Six eight seven. Six eight seven. So I'll just round it off. Okay, and what is our upper one? That's one and three quarters. We know what that is. That's one point seven five. Well, that's not. Oh, so it'll be one point seven. 
So now I know, right, that you can see in my graph, right, I must be in that blue interval somewhere, right? Root 3 has to be between these. So I'm going to say, I hope this looks familiar, I'm going to say if root 3 must be bounded. I've got a lower bound and an upper bound. I don't know where it is, but it's in there somewhere, right? So root 3 is between these. Okay? Now, I want to actually know what's the decimal value. So rather than say a range, because this is where I'm going to stop, I'm not going to do any more calculations, I'm going to say my best guess is it's in the middle. That's my best guess. If I had to say I know it's got to be here and here, I'm just going to arbitrarily pick the middle. I don't know which it's going to lean one way or the other. Like for example, you can, it's hard to guess, it depends on the function. You might have thought, okay, I've got a low value here and a high up. You can see, well, this is, this is x squared minus 3, right? So we should know actually how this behave. I, I'm going to get um, x squared minus 3. Here's going to be my vertex and it's going to come up like this. This is a parabola, okay? So I'm, I'm not surprised that it's further this way than that way, but I'm just going to guess now that I'm this close, halfway in between. So what is halfway between these two values? Can someone average it for me? 1.72. Now, if you get your calculator there, you can verify root 3 is in fact 1.73, okay? So that was pretty close. And have a look at like, was this complicated maths? Answer, no. I just had to evaluate some numbers. It was a little bit laborious. That's because it's a very simplistic way of doing it. No fancy like identities or trigonometry or calculus involved. Um, so the maths was easy, but it sort of converged there a little bit slowly. I would say this gives us the answer to the nearest one decimal place. The second decimal place is wrong, but it's pretty close. It's still in the ballpark. 